Welcome back to Comic Book News. Today, uh, we're going to talk about another legend. Recently, I did a review of uh, Frank Miller, one, arguably the most uh, influential modern-day comics creator out there who's influenced everyone who came before him. But today, we'll talk about somebody even more legendary, if you can believe it or not. This is the guy that gave Frank Miller his start in comics. We're going to talk about Neil Adams and Batman vs. Ra's al Ghul today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. Today, we're going to talk about Batman vs. Ra's al Ghul by the legendary Neil Adams. And when I say legendary, it's almost like you, that word gets thrown around all the time. I know I use it a lot to talk about some of my favorite creators. But you know what? Let's go right to the Million Dollar Comics cam. And, and we'll go straight into a little bit of background info on our man, Neil Adams. Because there are a few people uh, in comics as legendary as this guy, right? So uh, Neil was born in 1941. Uh, got a start in comics in the 50s, but wanted to break into superhero comics loved them but uh couldn't break in so um started working went to art school started working um in comic strips and uh and for archie comics and just wherever he could pick up work right um c couldn't get it at the big publishers but eventually broke in uh and was doing work on uh ben casey sort of medical comic strip and this is from the era where comic strips and comic strip artists in particular were held in much, much higher esteem than comic book artists. Like comic book artists in the in the 60s, comic books were viewed as sort of like the lowest rung of the illustration ladder. Um, and of course, those in the know who really loved the art form and understood what it was all about didn't feel that way. But that doesn't mean that they were respected, right? So... Uh, he, he worked in the newspaper strip in, industry, which was, you know, Alex Raymond, the, the classic uh, newspaper illustrators were referenced like photo illustrative um, quality artwork, right? And this is the sort of style that eventually Adams would bring into his work in the Silver Age comics. So he moved into, he worked at Warren Comics, did a bunch of horror stuff, then eventually did find work at DC doing... Um, war comics like our army at war and stuff like that um eventually started doing covers and work for superhero books did things like um the classic his well, he's probably best known in that period for doing dead man a character that he still like apparently really loves and and um you know works on to this day and we'll see he shows up in the comic i'm about to review so you know in the 60s guys like uh, Adams and Steranko. So anyway, after DC, he went over to work in Marvel, worked on the X-Men before the big relaunch, right? And did some really interesting stories that brought back Professor X. Um, but back in those days, he was one of the new guard of artists, right? One of the first of this like new generation of comics artists that wanted to bring in stuff from the advertising world and the photorealistic drawing world, referenced more from the comic strips maybe than the comic books, but blending that with the power of uh, Jack Kirby and combining that with like a photo illustrative uh, veneer to their work, man, and that's the what Neil Adams is. It's almost, he's almost so influential that you don't notice him because everyone who came after Neil Adams wanted to draw like Neil Adams, right? And you'll, you'll recognize some of his classic work. Eventually in DC, you know, he, he became very well known and respected. He revamped Green Arrow. He gave him his goatee. He made him a hippie and brought him together with like an uptight conservative Green Lantern. They did the classic uh, socially relevant comics, one of the first comics to, to like really tackle drug use. And boy, did they ever when... Uh, Green Arrow's partner Speedy becomes a heroin junkie, right? He's shooting up smack on the cover of of Green Lantern, Green Arrow. Um, they tackled things like racism and, uh, uh, and drug use, like I said, and other topics that were just kind of like taboo from the comics before that. Um, really opened up storytelling and cannot, really cannot overemphasize how influential Neil Adams was on the industry. And besides just being a great artist, he was one of those few who was also a really savvy business guy, right? So he ended up, 
you know, in the 70s, he was one of the first people uh, championing creators rights for comics. Back then, comic book artists didn't even get their original artwork back, if you can re- believe that. Like Jack Kirby just like would mail his pages away and they're gone. Those pages are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, certainly tens of thousands of dollars each now. And, and like, you know, he had no right to them. Now, all that's changed. Comic artists get their artwork back and are uh, paid royalties and all these things that they never got back then. Um, so... Adams, right? Neil Adams. He he did all this great work. Uh, he opened his own comic studio, Continuity, right? And and did some really uh, mixed work there, right? But there was stuff that he owned. They did Bucky O'Hare and a bunch of other really weird, weird comics, Armor and some other ones that never really picked took off but looked incredible they had that neil adams look and he hired a bunch of other artists to sort of work in like the old in old like studio fashion so today what's neil adams up to well besides putting out brand new comics he also just opened his own comic book store right uh the continuity west comic book boutique also known as the crusty bunkers uh comic book store so this is like an inside joke about what he used to call the people that worked i think in his art studio the crusty bunkers or something along those lines anyway um what's the fastest way to make a fortune a small fortune in the comic book world start with a big fortune right so i don't know maybe because it's in la and because of the current hot interest in all things comics and the fact that he has this entire creator owned continuity thing it really does make sense for him to have a showcase like this um that's not for me to decide no let's go now to the million dollar comics cam let's look at his comics right let's stop talking about the other stuff and let's take a look at batman versus ras agul okay so the first thing we'll notice is it's got one name art a- or uh, neil adams adams right neil adams did uh wrote this thing he drew it apparently inked it colored it and lettered it as well um my guess is that it's more likely that he's probably working in like has like studio assistants and stuff. I'm sure he's doing like at least the penciling and probably a lot of the inking. It's hard to say. I don't know. He's getting paid as the sole creator. He's the sole build guy. But I got a feeling there's other people behind it. Um, but, you know, look at this. Dynamic page layouts. Really great rendering. I mean, Neil Adams, whether he, it's under his art direction or done by him... He's got the eye. He's got the skill. He's he's really a great artist. I don't have any problems with the artwork at all, even at his advanced age. I mean, come on, 1941, guy's in his you know late 70s, and is able to put out comics that look pretty good stacked up to a modern day comic book page. The layouts are far from static. Of course, that's what he's known for is his dynamic layouts and perspective and. Uh, you know, we'll see if we find any like classic type Neil Adams stuff. A guy, run, Neil Adams characters like to run at you. Uh, lots of foreshortening and, and, and angles and stuff like this. The artwork's serviceable, right? If this was in the hands of a really great writer writing a great Batman story, dude, I would be so into Neil Adams' Batman. Like, he really still can draw. Unfortunately, this story is incoherent. Now, if you read any of his previous Batman stuff like that he did, like the Batman Odyssey miniseries, that stuff is out there, man. Not only is it hardly makes sense page to page sometimes, but there's all kinds of weird pseudo-scientific theory, hollow earth theories and stuff that apparently Adams is really into that he's put into the comics. Anyway, this one, he's coming back to the character that he created, co-created with Denny O'Neill, Ra's al Ghul. I mean, this is like... One of his most important uh, contributions to the legacy of Batman and comics in general is this character. And he's always really identified with Ra's al Ghul and as the creator, right? So to bring him back in this fashion, in this issue, Ra's al Ghul is like, he's like a, like, a, like a middle manager, kind of like administrator, government guy. I don't know. He's, he's got a clipboard or an iPad. And he's talking with Batman a lot. I, I'm not seeing any kind of, you know... Um, League of Assassins stuff or anything like that. Now, obviously, maybe that's a reveal coming later for the character or something. This is supposed to set us up for for it. But 
it's hard to understand where this is supposed to live in Batman continuity. Is it set in the past, in the future? Anyway, you'll see some of these designs and stuff a little bit dated. You know, Dead Man pops in and, 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 and uses slang like Daddy-O. It's very fitting for Dead Man's character. A little outdated. This sort of cyborg character and some of the wacky banter. I don't really even want to get into it. It's so goofy. All I want to get into here is this sort of like ending here. I'm going to reveal a little bit of the of the cliffhanger ending of this one because it's just such a head scratcher. So Batman's fighting the cyborg dude. Suddenly it blows up and they go. And then there's like Nightwing and the two of the Robins are there. And they're like, whoa, the Batman's cow, it's coated in blood. And let me see that thing. So much blood. Oh, there's no body parts, just blood. Oh, test the blood. Test the damn blood. We got to figure out, is this really Batman? And then all of a sudden, who shows up? This guy. Is it Bruce Wayne? I, I would think so, right? So the reveal is like Bruce Wayne. Oh, cliffhanger ending. Oh, Batman's dead, but here's Bruce Wayne. Something's not right, but okay. We'll figure that out next time, right? It's over, right? No. There's still another like page of stuff where they go, Finally, at the very end, go, and that was who? Bruce Wayne, like Nightwing knew, but Robin, I didn't get it at all. It's very disjointed. L let's look at this design work on the on the cover for a second. I don't know if you can tell. It's hard. The lighting's a little weird here. This font and, and the, the fill being used here on this Rasagul is so like, 1991 Kai's Power Tools, like brand. I'm brand new to Photoshop. I'm a guy in my late 70s using computer coloring techniques. Is it Neil Adams? It, it, did he do this? Did he do all this stuff himself? If so, he's showing some dated sensibilities. He's showing a guy that is way better than any other creator of that advanced age doing like modern superhero comics that I ever remember seeing. You know, some of these guys come back and they lose a step or two. Um, he's got the chops, but I'm going to argue that, you know, Neil Adams was never that great of a writer. Okay, so we've got Batman versus Ra's al Ghul, but if we go back through his work at Continuity Comics, we're going to find a little gem known as Skate Man. And this is known... Uh, by many as one of, if not the worst comic ever created. It's one. It, it's great to look at. Look, Neil Adams. Look at that kick right to the face. That's a classic Neil Adams action pose. Kind of interesting. Guys wearing shorts and skatey skates and like a do rag thing. You know, this was put out in the eighties, and this just like Neil Adams was that out of touch then. How out of touch is he now? Now, I've seen interviews with the guy. He's as sharp as a tack still. I mean, he's a very shrewd man. Smart, thoughtful, knows his place in the industry, gives mad props to those who came before him like Jack Kirby and uh, and, and all the other greats who he learned from and, uh, and, and has always seemed a pretty humble guy. I mean, he knows his place is important in the industry, but um, doesn't seem delusional. But when he writes these comics, man, they are out there material this is the kind of stuff where with he needs an editor i don't know if there's even an editor involved in this process but it sure doesn't seem like it i hate to give a bad review another bad review to another comic book legend but it doesn't do them any good to blow smoke up their ass right I'm, that's what's happening with these guys is nobody can tell them no what editor is going to get a script from frank miller or neil adams and tell them you know, this is kind of like not good at all. Like amateurish in the extreme. Nobody's going to say it, so I'm going to say it. Neil, I love you. I respect you. You've got a place in the comic book industry. If you want to keep drawing comics that look as good as this, keep doing it till you drop dead, man. But you could have your pick of any writer in the industry. Any of the greats would love to work with Neil Adams. I can almost guarantee that. Talk to a Warren Ellis, right? Talk to a, talk to a, a, talk to a Bendis even, right? Let's just talk to anybody. Talk to Tom King if you have to. Let's get a writer in there 
uh, who can write with a more modern sensibility that actually like tracks from page to page. Um, but but Neil, no matter what, we love you. You're one of the all-time greats. This does not diminish from your history and your past in comics, so keep doing what you're doing. Hey, speaking of keeping doing what you're doing and uh, being appreciated for it, thank you for watching this video, right? Uh, it, everything that you do, when you like and you comment and you subscribe to these videos, it helps me. This channel is growing rapidly and uh, we're getting to the point where we're gonna be monetized, hopefully, one of these days but until then i'm gonna keep putting out content i'm gonna keep reviewing comics as they come out every week i've got some longer form features coming up soon so uh stay tuned keep watching thanks for your support and we will see you next time